Hey, my friends, we are live. I hope everything is okay. So say hi in the chat box. Seven sus two, really nice name on YouTube, but I'd like to know your real name, man. Thanks to this dream. Hi. Hey, Jean. <laughs> no motivation, just want to know you guys. Hey, Melvin, Matthias. Hi guys, if you have questions, this is exactly what we'll do in the stream. So if you have any question for me, go ahead. I'm just going to play guitar. We're going to hang out. I can answer your questions. That's why I'm live for you. So I think that the uh, YouTube has notified you this time. We have more people than the last stream, which is super great. <laughs> I don't know how YouTube notifies you, but... <laughs> hey, Mark, Mark, how are you, man? From Las Vegas. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna call you Major 7 Sus 2 if, if it's too, uh, <laughs> too complicated to pronounce for me. That's okay. Hey, Jason. So you say, do I ever record direct without an amp? And this is exactly what I'm doing now. So I have my audio interface with two inputs for the stream. And I hope it sounds great. Hey, tell me in the comment section, do you hear me well? Do you hear my guitar well? I have lowered the volume a little bit. It's not mastered like my uh, usual YouTube videos, just to make sure it's not going to clip. So tell me if it's... Uh, sounding great on the stream. But yeah, for now I have my microphone on one input of my audio interface and the second cable is just my pedal board plugged into it. So what you're hearing right now for the stream is a direct sound, which sounds great, it sounds okay. I prefer my amps, but uh, no direct for now. On my ambient sketches and YouTube videos, of course. James, good morning. So where are you? Are you on the Pacific time to say good morning? For me, it's noon. It's lunchtime. So tell me where you are in the world. What is the, the, the time in the world right now? Is it uh, your lunchtime? Is it morning? Is it evening? Maybe for Europe? I just came back yesterday for my, from my tour with my band Mystery. So I have a bit of jet lag and we changed the hour, uh, the time in Europe. So we uh, backed up the hour, but I have to do it once again next week. So it's really confusing to me. Okay, Melvin, you said, uh, would you recommend adding a chorus pedal for ambient music? Of course I do. For me, it's the Strymon Ola. I'm gonna kick it in. I use it more with the vibrato. It sounds like this. I really like the old school vibe, like lo-fi vibe a little bit. Hey, Mohamed Reza, how are you, man? Lunchtime in Pennsylvania, California. Yes, it's more morning. So yeah, for my uh, for my chorus pedal, it's the Ola. I use the vibrato setting most of the times, but if not, just 
a very light chorus city. For a long time, I didn't have a chorus pedal because I found out that the modulation on my delays and reverbs were enough for me. So maybe you don't need one. It's not really necessary, but in my case, I use a chorus pedal on my board. I had uh, the warped vinyl too. I have it here. I have used the warped vinyl for a little bit of time, but it's a bit complicated uh, compared to the other pedals I have with all the, the, the little switches at the front here. So I prefer to use the Ola, which is uh, more straightforward. Yeah, Muhammad Reza, it's night for you, of course. <laughs> yeah, 5 p.m. in the Netherlands. So, y Jan, curious, uh, I don't know if you were at the mystery gig uh, last week. I don't, maybe it's, it was 10 days ago or something, something like that. I haven't had time to uh, see you on that gig. I'm sorry, we had so many things. We had to clear the, the stage uh, really early. So maybe next time we'll be able to chat and have a beer together. Yeah, so Indonesia. Great. Welcome to the stream. Keoni, yes. Welcome to the stream, everyone. So uh, I'm going to make sure I haven't missed any questions here. So, okay, Vin said, what was the driving force for you? to go with the beautiful Shure guitar over other brands. Um, I think the main reason was because, and we talked about that on the last stream, is that my favorite guitar player is Guthrie Govan. And for a long time, he's been endorsing Shure guitars. So when I was 18, I wanted to buy myself a great gift because in Canada, you are uh, an adult at 18 now, so it's been uh, almost 10 years ago, but uh, I wanted to pay myself a great gift of a great guitar and I was really interested about Shures and there was one shop that was closing its doors and it has had many Shures uh, and it was a big sale of like 50% on the Shures, so I just uh, ended up buying one and I fell in love with this guitar, so I bought many Shures uh, after in the future, but now I just have only one because I don't know if you've seen my video about uh, minimalism, why I have only one uh, electric guitar. It's because of that I downsized. Uh, this is my favorite guitar. I always play with it, so I only kept this one. So that's why I chose Sure, but any Sure player that you see on internet, now I'm a big fan of Larry Basilio, I don't know if you know her, she's from Brazil. She's an incredible guitar player and she uses Sir and uh, Tom Quell used Sir. So all of the, the, the guitar players that I liked on YouTube used Sir guitar. So it was a big inspiration for me to pick one up. And this one was a used guitar here uh, on the used market in Montreal. So I couldn't pass the opportunity. And for the last five years, it's been my favorite guitar. So, um, Gene, ever use an OD or fuzz to darken your tone? Uh, to be honest, oh, wait, that's right, I don't have to say the H is on, <laughs> honest. To be honest, I don't use much gain. I always play very, very clean, and you see this with my uh, ambient sketches, always play super clean. <laughs> And when I use a distortion or overdrive pedal, it's really to go right. Not a lot of volume on this one, but it's not really to darken my tone. Uh, it's just to have a lot of gain and do some swells with it. So I don't really have something to recommend to uh, darken your tone. So. Uh, most of you know from where I come from, yes, from Iran. So, Muhammad Reza, I really know where you come from. Yeah, and you were at the gig, yes, you had fun. Uh, we had fun on stage too. This was an incredible tour. This was, in fact, the best tour of mystery in my eyes. We played almost every night. We had some big crowds. Uh, one of the big highlights of the tour was the, was the Z7, which is a mythical venue in Switzerland. So, I had really a lot of fun playing there. I saw many of my artists and DVD 
shot there. So it was really, really nice to go there. And like I said, I could have my YouTube channel go out while I was away for the month for my tour. That's the magic of filming and scheduling your videos in advance. Matthias, uh, greetings from Germany. Great. So Ger I was in Germany just last week for four shows in a row in Germany with my band. Uh, Mark says, I put sure pickups on my garden strat. They are awesome. So yeah, so these ones are uh, ML standards pickup on mine and I really, really love them. I always play with um, uh, the neck pickup, which is my favorite. And I have a blend knob here where I is always at 10, which thickens up just a little bit my tone. Uh, so this is the blend knob. This is without, without it. So this is the same pickup without any blend. And this is with the blend. You get a bit more bass with it, a bit more low end. It's still thin a little bit, but this is the kind of tone I like clean like this. So I always put the blend up here. Uh, James, hi James. Uh, aside from English and French, uh, from other videos I've heard you speak, I don't speak French much of the time on my channel. What other, other languages do you speak? None, my friend. Uh, I had a trip in Greece last uh, year. I just learned uh, one word or two. Same for when I go to Germany or anything else. So um, no other languages. Those are my two mains. But when you're Canadian, especially in the, the French part of Canada, you know both. Uh, the guitar, that sounds awesome. Uh, Derelict, I don't know if it's really your name or just your channel name. Just want to say your videos have helped me a lot in my own ambient endeavors. So I'm really glad to hear that. That's what I'm here for, man. So thanks you very much. Um, the guitars my favorite guitar players use are way too expensive. Yeah, but don't let get that discourage you, Mohamed Reza. I, I could afford the sure guitar of my dreams that I, I've seen many guitar players play with, but it doesn't really matter the make or the brand of your guitar. You can just use whatever you want and express yourself. That's what matters, man. So for you, it's Ibanez, of course, yeah. Um, Geocar16, I just want to know that you're... I just want you to know that you're a very inspiring musician. Your tips have helped me a lot. So once again, thank you very much, guys. You are in a good mood today. I am too. Eh? <laughs> so Mark asks, any hints for getting the timing right for the initial loop? I do starting the tones before starting the loop. And that help with smoothing the transition, but start stop timing is different. Okay, so I see why you're saying that because many people ask me, how do you have a seamless loop on your looper pedal? Because many times, I have my looper just here, many times people are going to start their loops like this. They're going to do. After, there's like a cut. Hear it like it. So what I usually tell people to do is that you should play before you record your loop so that the reverbs and the delays of your sounds are already recorded underneath the first second of your loop because it trailed because you played beforehand. So. Now, this is one thing, but now he's asking about having the right timing for the loop. And there isn't a big secret for that, aside for practicing with a metronome. I know this is the standard answer, but um, like some of you know, I have studied uh, guitar for many years at university, and I had to practice with a metronome time and time again during my studies, and I think it really solidified my timing. Uh, it's like the metronome is always going on inside my head, but you can physically do it. 
you could tap your foot like you're, uh, while you are doing it. You can move physically a little bit. So if, if I play something like... like in my head and I feel it in my body and then I, I click exactly at the right time but I'm gonna think about more tips for it maybe for future videos because the I know Muhammad Reza also asked it uh, the timing for ambient guitar this is not something that we talk very often so I will think about more tips for you for this and I keep uh, this in my head for a future video so then uh, Gene said that he has a squire and Ibanez. He prefers the Ibanez. Uh, this is just a preference. But yeah, don't, uh, don't let that discourage you, the, the type of guitar you have. Questions. Are all your sketches one take by Soft Pillow? So welcome to the stream, man. You want to know if my sketches are one take. So multiple answers to that. First answer is when I first started doing my ambient sketches on YouTube. This was like 10, 15 takes before I had the right one. And I'm not talking about complete takes. I would start playing and the second I would mess up, I, was ju I would just stop my loops and start all over again. And sometimes it would, it would be frustrating because I would just start my song like this. <laughs> And when I had just a small mistake, I would stop and, the, and then I would turn off my camera, I would delete the file, I would delete my audio file on my computer. So this is really not the way to go. What I should, re what I recommend if you want to make ambient songs is just go with it, make mistakes and practice it before you record. That's going to be much easier. So now... Nowadays, when I make my ambient sketches, because now it's more than 90 sketches already on my channel, it's pretty much one, two, three takes at best, and I can get it right because I have more experience recording my songs and just going with the flow. And uh, of course, I rehearse, uh, or I rehearse the song before I record it, so it helps a lot. But uh, most, of, most of the times right now, because I have made more than 90 sketches, I can just write it and pretty much record it right away and get it right. So that's it for this question. Uh, you guys are talking about uh, single coils and types of guitars. What's your go-to amplifier in general, uh, James? So I have the same amplifiers combo since five, six years already. Uh, I don't know if you really see them well. It's my Shure Badger 30 and my Vox AC 15. So if I had to choose only one, I would choose my uh, Vox amp because I really liked the, the chime of Vox amp. So if you go with the AC 15 or an AC 30, this is going to make the job uh, really well for ambient guitar to get a really nice clean tone, uh, kind of chimey, punchy a little bit. I really like it. And in my case, I really like the blue uh, Alnico speaker in it because uh, for the Vox AC15s and 30, you can have either the blue, Celestine blue or the green back. So I prefer much the blue than the green for the AC, I think it has more chime to it. That's what I like. But my Badger is also phenomenal. But like we said for guitars, this is an expensive amp. This is made by Sure, so not anyone can afford it. But I really, really like my amp. So once you have an amp that you really, really like, I recommend to uh, stick to it for as long as you can. It's going to develop your own sound that is going to be your signature. I'm pretty sure everyone in the chat here could close their eyes, just hear me play guitar, and they will know that it's me because of that. So that's it for James. Salut Antoine, so Oli, salut Oli. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna maybe read it in French and a uh, traduction after. 
So from Switzerland, so I was in, in Switzerland just a few days ago. Euh, je n'ai pas eu beaucoup de temps pour bosser ma guitare, mais le peu que j'ai fait en suivant ta méthode m'a déjà beaucoup appris et inspiré. Merci. Alors, euh, merci beaucoup, Ali. So, uh, Ali is just saying that uh, he's learned a lot uh, with my stuff and he's not have, he hasn't have enough time lately uh, to practice guitar, but he learned a lot. Inhabitant music from Daytona, Florida, USA. So for you too, it's your lunch time. So bon appétit, like we say in English. Um, yeah, so say hi in the chat, guys. Uh, if you are here and you haven't said hi, the, the goal is just to hang out with each other and you can play. Uh, you can play. I can play. You can ask questions, of course. <laughs> Just want to know, uh, I asked at the beginning, beginning of the stream, is the balance okay? Do you hear me well? Is the sound of the guitar okay? Uh, because on the first stream, that was really chaotic at first. We, my voice was doubled. And so it seems like everything is fine. Is No one is complaining in the chat room. But uh, just tell me if everything is okay. The sound should be a little bit lower than usual on my YouTube videos just to keep it at a healthy level and uh, not have anything clipping. So if you guys have questions or you're curious about something, just use the chat room and I'm here for you. Man. balance yet yeah, lower than usual but the problem the main problem is that this bad boy here the sm7b is a really good microphone for podcasting voices it sounds really really good but it is very low on gain so on my audio interface the gain is at maximum with this one I should buy a cloud lifter which uh, lets you use it with phantom power and gives more power But I think just having a lower stream is just okay. You can just uh, higher the volume on your speakers or on your phone. And uh, I'm sure this is okay for you. Uh, Muhammad Reza, fun fact, we also use merci as thanks in Persian language. It's become a part of our language from the ages we had a relations with French authorities in history. So. Merci to you. Uh, Jean asks, what size of picks do you use? So I'm using Jazz 3 picks uh, from as long as I can remember. They are very, very small and they are one. And the fact that it's really, really precise, uh, I don't really need a pick that is as precise for ambient guitar. But in my shredding days, that was really, really good because I could hold it like this and just have like a small millimeter just going after my thumb and I could play some, I'm gonna re remove my reverb, I, I could play some really fast lines this way because that's really, really precise like this. This way. <laughs> This was really, okay, stop the delays. This was really precise for me to play some shred stuff. And now I'm just used to, to those types of picks. So that's what I use, even if I play much, much slower than before. Uh, it's just fine, yeah, so... Uh, Jay Cardenas says, I've learned a lot for you. Thank you. I'm starting to practice looping. I only have the TC Electronic Flashbacks Looper feature. Uh, what looper would you recommend? I mean, for starters. So I would recommend exactly that. Uh, if you didn't know, I started exactly with a flashback looper with my channel six years ago. So if you look, if you go on my on the video tab on my channel, 
and you sort the videos by date, the oldest videos, and you watch the first one, it's like ambient looping something. I don't remember the name, but you will see that. Yes, I walked to the, to the camera to put it on, but I loop exactly with the flashback delay and looper. So you can accomplish a lot with that. You have only one channel of loop, but you can overdub as much as you want. So that's pretty much what you need to start. Uh, I would learn more chords. I would learn to really balance my loop from what I, I add on the loop to really orchestrate your loop. Uh, learn about swells and drones and other textures to play ambient guitar. You can do all of that even with a very simple looper of the flashback. So don't let that stop you. And if you want to go further and you guys, if you download my uh, guide on writing for ambient guitar, which is the guide that I always write at the end of each of my ambient sketches. My number one tip on that guide is to invest in your looper pedal because when you can work on your arrangement more, for me, this is the big game changer when you want to write for ambient guitar. Because even if you have all the best delay and reverb pedals in the world, if you can't really make a good arrangement for your song, you are not going to touch people as much with your music. Uh, the example I tell in this, and you probably all know this song, it's Ambient, uh, Ambient Song Number 22 by Andy Othling, which now has like, it's crazy, 2.2 million views on YouTube. In this song, he's using the Boomerang Looper and he layers many kinds of textures. And after a while, the main guitar part just disappears and you only have the textures, the drones like this remaining. Uh, something like this. very beautiful but after a while the, the main part just comes out of nowhere and it's, the, it's really how you can use your looper to make a better arrangement so in my guide this is the first tip I say you should invest and you should save up for a great looper pedal if you're serious about ambient guitar it's it matters even more than delays and reverbs to me you could have some basic one basic delay one basic reverb but a really nice uh, looper pedal. So the, the Boomerang 3 phrase sampler is my favorite, of course. Uh, the Ditto, Ditto X4 from uh, TC Electronic is also really good. Uh, you Even the Boss, I don't remember which one it is, the Boss RC something, 500, I'm not sure. But Boss makes a good one too for it. So that's what I would recommend for looper, but it's not really budget, but it's really worth it. Uh, okay, so uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Vince, stupid work gets in the way of making major progress with practice and a program without a good chunk of time to dedicate towards my lessons. What type of shorter practice do you recommend? So I think this is the case for many, many people here. You wish you could have more time. And of course, that's the problem of everyone. But uh, especially if you have my program, you have the exercise sheet. So what I would do is during uh, the weekend, maybe just watch one lesson on the program just to make sure you know about the chords and what it is. And then uh, uh, follow the exercises with me, the first two ones I show you. And then you can just focus on the exercises of that module, just one exercise per day, something like that. So you read the exercise, and you play it again and again for like 10, 15 minutes and you can call it quits. So just give yourself some really, really small objectives. Like I'm just going to decipher and play one exercise per day for only 10 minutes and make sure that you go through your 10 minutes and after you, you can put your guitar down and go through something else. And if you want to keep practicing, then it's good, it's just extra for you. So I think that people put a lot of pressure on themselves and they have goals that are too big for them and they just end up being un dissatisfied with 
they're playing and what they do but the fact is that you can always practice for just five ten minutes per day it doesn't matter it's just it's better to practice 10 minutes per day every day no matter when it is i'm sure you can find 10 minutes per day it's better to do that than just one hour per week it's really the consistency that is the key to get better at guitar and it's the same to write your song you could just work on your song 10 15 minutes per day just find a new texture just add a new thing in your arrangement or something like that and you can make progress uh, it's the same thing i say to people who want to have tips to start a youtube channel what i say is consistency is the key you, you you can't just make videos when you can and when you want you have to go for for the long run and say I'm gonna make one video per week and be really consistent with it and map out my content beforehand so it's the same thing for practice make yourself a schedule and be strict with it every day for 10 minutes I'm gonna play no matter what I'm gonna practice as small as possible but it's going to be every day so good luck with that but there is no secret for it right we have to play and practice regularly to get better right so uh, John is here, Keoni. Antoine, what effects do you have on right now? So, I guess I was playing with the Immerse Mark II. So, if I go with each effect one by one, the Immerse Mark II on the wet setting. So this is my always on reverb pedal, the wet setting, wherever I, whenever I have the stereo wet or the Immerse Mark II, it's always my new neighbor reverb that is always on. Then this is my El Capistan with a very small mix. This is not too much. Oh, it was faster than that. Like this. Pretty dirty. But it's still small. And I happen to have my Ola Chorus. The mix is so small that you barely notice it, but it was on because I showed the Ola at the beginning of the stream. But that's pretty much what I have. I didn't put out my compressor this time. I don't know why. <laughs> so that's it for my settings. John, uh, patch settings, please. Uh, 22 minutes, 45 seconds. So. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Frex Manual, if that's your name, uh, I cannot go back to my stream to know what was the time. I know, I know it's been 30 minutes already, but uh, maybe I can uh, put it in a comment section afterwards. Uh, Zill, I, it's, it's far for me. Zill May Jink, <laughs> Antoine, you recommend beginners on a budget to start with uh, multi effects capable of decent sound and loops. So totally, if you are really on a budget and you are, you, I don't have much experience though with multi effects. I had the Line 6 uh, Pod 500X for my first tour with Mystery, but it was more for dry, overdriven sounds. And it was, um, really nice for what it did on me because I could have my presets with one click on tour but I much prefer pedal board and individual pedals in my studio like this but you don't need that you could have a uh, multi effects unit to start especially if it has a looper on it that could be great but most of the times if you don't implement one thing at a time you could end up overwhelmed especially if you are a beginner so that's why i don't 100 percent recommend multi-effects unit because if you don't have the basics to set up your delays your reverbs uh, your reverbs uh, how to do your different textures uh, your compressor settings and how to loop and it can be a lot at the same time i had a videos i think it was six months ago where that was called one pedal at a time where i discussed that that if you want to tackle on too many things at a time you end up overwhelmed and you do 
nothing. So you know the type of person you are. Do you like tweaking? Do you like discovering new sounds and things like that? And you don't mind spending a lot of time with a pedal? If it's the case, a multi-effect can be really great for you. But um, if you're always overwhelmed and you don't really know about settings and you keep asking people what are their settings and you don't really understand how everything goes together to make your great tones and great sounds, maybe it's gonna be a bit too much for you. And I would recommend, uh, like, I don't know who asked about the TC Electronic Looper, but you could start with a flashback, TC Electronic flashback delay and looper. You would have a delay and a looper with it and you could start one pedal at a time experimenting. So that's what I would do if I were you. But as far as the brand of multi-effects, I have no experience almost with it. So I would suggest you to go uh, to the channel of Chords of Orion, Bill Vensel, and he has tried many of them, Helix and things like that. It's not even on a budget for a Helix, but uh, maybe if you're lucky, he could answer you in the comment section of his video. He has a lot more experience for me uh, than me for ambient guitar with multi effects. So, um, uh, Matthias, it seems to me that you change your volante against to uh, again to the timeline on your board. What is the reason? So. Sometimes people freak out about the changes I made on my pedal board, but the reasons are fairly simple. So this is my ambient sketch number 84. I believe I wanted to have a reverse sound with my delays. And like you know, the Volante doesn't allow for reverse delay. So I swap my Volante with the timeline and I used a reverse sound and then I make other ambient sketches and I never changed my pedal board. So this is not a, a reason of functionality or one pedal that I like more than the other. It's just that I changed my board and I haven't changed it again. So I, I like both pedals really, really much, but I think what, why the timeline has a little bit an edge with it is that I have all of my presets already on it. So I have my presets for my swells, uh, for the ice mode to create a semi shimmer sound with my delays. Uh, what do I have to I have a really nice pattern delay? I have so I have many patches that I use a lot on the timeline. So. When I use the Volante, it's like I start from scratch, you know, and I have to tweak more. So sometimes I just feel like sitting down, writing a song and recording it, and that's it. I don't have to change pedals and tweak sounds, and I just go with it and with my inspiration. So that's pretty much why I don't have the Volante on my board, but it's an awesome pedal. Uh, did I miss something? I think someone has asked about the dig at some point, but I can't find it. Can't find it. Uh, Gene, you are using the Tortex right now. Yeah, so that's what I used at the beginning, but now it's really uh, just three picks. Uh, you use the Boomerang tree. I would have to have six channels one day. I suppose I could media two Boomerangs. Uh, the problem when you chain uh, loopers is that the, the, the looper that is at the end is going to record what is being played back on the one that is before it. So chaining loopers is not really the best idea for it. I don't know if you could have a parallel setting or something, but, uh, I really recommend to have only one looping pedal. Yes. So Muhammad Jezza, uh, should say bye. It's time for dinner. So. Hey, man, we'll see uh, each other on a new stream. Rock hard riffs. Hi, uh, you love your all that too. Oh, that's where is the, the Strymon dig. Uh, I don't use a Strymon dig often because uh, the El Capistan is never going to go out of my board because I love it so much. And then it's the timeline for my presets, what I just explained a minute ago. And then I don't have much space for a third delay. I'm not sure that would be the dig. Um, if you want to know why I would use, use the dig, I made my video about uh, comparing all Strymon delay pedals. And I said that the dig was more like if you just want one delay pedal, because it's a dual delay pedal, and you want to create soundscapes and you want to 
it to pierce through the mix and you play with a band and you want it to, to pierce, that's a really good pedal. But the thing that is lacking for me with the dig is a modulation knob. It's just a, a switch with a off, light and deep modulation. And I don't really like that. This is not my sweet spot for me. So I much prefer delay pedals with a modulation knob on it. So Brad, hey Brad, you are in the stream, yes. So I have the flashback delay, but I don't use its looper. For looping, I rely on my Ditto stereo looper. So of course, if you want something dedicated to looping, uh, it's much better to have a Ditto looper or something like that, especially if you have reverb pedals, it's better to place them after your delay. So if you loop with your flashback, your reverbs are going to affect the rest of your loop. So let's say you want to record a regular reverb and then a drone reverb, you cannot layer them on top of one another unless you place your delay pedal at the end of your chain and that your reverb is first, which isn't bad, but it's not the best way to do it. I much prefer my delays before my reverb in my chain. Uh, thanks for such a great answers. Uh, yeah, and I choose actually for a Bill Van Sil demo. <laughs> Yes, so you're from Mexico, Zelme Jank. So uh, thanks for passing by on the stream. Uh, do I know John Carolino? Yes, I know him. And I think it's a pity that he doesn't uh, upload more often. I know I've seen lately, I haven't watched a video, but he's doing a, a like 30 days challenge something. So it's really great. So now you will have a lot of content from him uh, in the next month, but he could go for months without um, posting new videos. So I think this is the same criticism I have with Andy Othling nowadays. He doesn't post often enough. So that's why I work really hard to post multiple times a week. So people don't forget about me and that you have a, a lot of great, useful content on my channel here. So I think that John Carolino uh, first started to uh, become more popular on YouTube when he won the, um, the Strymon contest to win a Strymon Flint. So we had a professionally shot video, uh, maybe at his church or something, and he was playing some really inspiring ambient music, and he ended up uh, winning the contest, and many people saw his video, and that's when he got a huge boost in subscribers, and that's when I found out about him. So he has some really great ambient music too. So I know about him, of course, maybe we should do a, um, a collaboration video someday. And I think I'm due to do a new collab video with Bill from Chords of Orion too. Uh, I'm going to keep that in mind and I'm going to contact Bill very soon. Maybe we could do something. I mean, I, uh, it's been almost two years, I think since we've made our, uh, music videos together. So maybe we are due now for more collabs. Uh, inhabitant music. So that's why I hope they make a six channel looper one day. I think a six channel looper exists. Uh, you should um, find something. It's electro harmonics, I believe. I don't remember what is the name of it. Uh, this is not the infinity looper or something. I will search about it, but search for the loopers of electro harmonics. They have a big line of loopers. And I think that one of them has many, many different channels of loops on it. So, um, yeah, go check that out from electro harmonics. Uh, the looper is the last thing in the signal chain. Usually of course, so you can, um, change the sounds when you loop to layer your sounds. Uh, yeah, 30 videos that are cool. So yes, so I haven't played on the stream. You guys have asked too many questions, but that's fine. This is a Q and A, this is exactly for it. But uh, now I have a bit of time to play. So while I'm playing, you can uh, ask your questions and uh, I will answer after. So this is my one of my favorite chords on the guitar. This is major nine chord, this is so beautiful. I really like to uh, improvise on this chord for my demos. Or...
less popular, but I'm sure there is one with a lot of channels, so go check that out. morning for them on the eastern side it's your lunch break uh, on the Europe side it's like 5 6 p.m. and I get a bit of Asia too so that's pretty much a good time for a stream I think <laughs> That's not on your board right now. Uh, I have, to be honest with you, I have many pedals that I have purchased but are not on my board right now because I don't have the time to implement everything. So each time I am making a new demo of a pedal, I kind of see if I can integrate it in my pedal board. And then if I can, if it really blows my mind, I do. So I've uh, demoed the... Um, the MXR uh, Carbon Copy Deluxe, which is not good enough to put on my board. The Ocean's 11, which doesn't beat my current um, reverb pedals. But there is one that I'm really excited about, which is, and I have it, the Mel 9 from Electro Harmonics. I wanted to have it since a long time, but now I have too many things I want to do for my channel right now to play with it. So before the end of the year, I'm gonna make a demo with it. I'm gonna make ambient songs with it. And I'm really a big fan of Mellotrons. Uh, I am playing keyboards in a progressive rock band. So I have choir Mellotrons and string Mellotrons and even flute Mellotrons that I'm playing, of course. So I really like the sound of it and I want to see how I can implement it on my board uh, to make different kinds of textures really uh, for my swells, for other textures. So that's one I'm really excited to see if I can put on my board. And from all the pedals I've purchased, uh, I think this is the most likely to end up staying on my board after. So that would have, be, that would have to be the Mel 9. Sorry for my microphone. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, enjoying it. The technology keeps rolling on. I would love to try a sur guitar. I've noticed a lot of great players like yourself have them. So don't let the fact that I have a sure guitar pedal, a sure guitar, uh, make you buy a sure guitar. I really want you to try it before and see if it's worth the investment. For me, it was because I, I want. I have never been as comfortable on a guitar as this sure guitar here. But maybe for you, this is not worth the investment. Maybe a, a guitar that's gonna cost four times less is going just to be slightly uh, less quality than this one. But uh, for some people, it's really worth it, and it is to me, but uh, make sure that you are going to trim the price. I think the 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 street price for this guitar is like close to five grands, so it's a lot of money, but I paid a little less than $2,000 for it, so I cut half of the price of this guitar just because it was used. And I think it was made custom because it's a, a classic 
antique. So it's not really antique. The antique guitars of sure have a lot of chips on it. But this one, there are some really, really subtle stripes on it like this that you don't see from afar. You really have to look very, very close to it to see it. So it doesn't have the look of an antique. It's just really, really light aging. But uh, it was custom made since the, the aging is light. So that's even better if it was custom made for someone. And then I can cut on the price on it. So other questions. Uh, I know you mentioned the name of your band earlier, but I missed it. So the name of my band is called Mystery. Uh, you can go, our website is called therealmystery.com. I can even uh, type it right now. So therealmystery.com. And you can uh, see my band here. Uh, we have released a new album last year. We are working on a new one. And actually, a scoop for some people, if you follow my band, um, I have one song that was on my channel, but now I made it unlisted or private because I'm working on it. Uh, this was a prog rock sketch that I posted a few years ago. I think it was three years ago, and it's probably going to end up on the new album of Mystery. So that's uh, very, uh, very exciting for me. Uh, I'm reading at the same time. I gotta say you can add the Sure Pups, yeah, the Sure Pickups. And they are 80 bucks each, and it really helped the tone of my golden. So yeah, that's 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 what I should have done, uh, really. Uh, just find a guitar that you're really comfortable in, and you buy some sure pickups, and you slap the, these bad boys on your guitar, and you can have a sh kind of sure sound uh, on a more on a budget. Maybe if you have three pickups, it's going to be three hundred dollars, but uh, it's a lot better than paying for the whole sure guitar. But in my case, I like I like this one very much, especially because of the neck. It's a really thick neck, and I find I find that the tone really comes from the neck. And uh, this is a roasted maple neck. So it's really roasted in an oven and it really I think it removes all the the humidity and imperfections of the wood. And it's so, so stable. I have also, uh, already brought that guitar on tour in Europe. And I'm not kidding, when I just um, took the guitar out of its case on tour after being uh, uh, on the plane and uh, um, mistreated by the airport employees, I just brought it out of the case and it was perfectly in tune. Of course, it has to do with the, the locking tuners, but uh, this is so stable, this guitar, and even the intonation is so stable on this guitar. And I think the tone all comes from that baseball bat, thick neck here that is roasted maple, and it's really, really, really good sounding. So that's, um, that's the, the best thing about my guitar here. Uh, I have noticed the tone with ambience is spot on. 2000 is reasonable. So it's really reasonable for you guys, uh, for you. Uh, inhabited music, but uh, for some people, this is maybe a too much of a budget. But like anything, you can save up for a long time and can treat yourself after a while. Uh, doesn't your guitar have sure Michael Lando pickups? Yes, it has. So it's a sure ML pickups on my guitar. Uh, of course, because my guitar is sure, so they have never been replaced. But I could have buy, uh, I could have bought only the pickups and put it on another Fender Strat or something, and I would have a similar tone. Of course, I would not have the roasted maple and the same kind of neck and the stability of the guitar and the woods. But uh, I could get closer for the sound since I would have sure pickups on it. So that's pretty much about it. So a little five minutes more from the streams and we are going to end it. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna stream every month now. So pretty much every end of the month, uh, I'm gonna make a stream. So next November, maybe 24, 25, 26, in that area of the month, end of the month, I'm gonna make some streams. I don't know if I'm going to make Q&A and ambient guitar every time or just 
maybe I'm going to plan a lesson or something like that. I'm going to see if I can vary the, the style of the streams. But this one was really a great stream. Uh, you guys asked questions and it was really nice. Uh, last time I did it at 3 p.m. and ha I had less people. So now it's better. I'm th I think I'm going to do at this time um, all the next times because I, I caught more people. And uh, it seems to be better for uh, most people here. <laughs> Any last minute questions, guys? you do uh, kindness is appreciated so yeah that's what I want that's why I want to do more streams now because I want to talk to you guys I know I want to know who you are I want to know uh, what are your struggles what I can help you with because at the end of the day I'm making my channel to uh, develop my musicality and make my songs but the the main objective of my channel is to help you make ambient music and inspire you and educate you with chords and something like that. So uh, thank you for saying that. Uh, this, this is really why I'm doing this. <music> Matthias, you're saying yes, but what? Yes, you have a question or something like that? <laughs> Just a few minutes and we're done. worth to change the stereo wet against the immerse so for a long time I thought that I wouldn't do it um, because the stereo wet if you look at my comparison video between the both immerse and the stereo wet especially the the the, the specific version of the wet I have has more bottom end it's warmer it's super intimate and I really like that. But for a long time now, for a few months, I have um, put the Immerse Mark II at the place of the wet on my board. And I'm playing right now with the wet setting. And the more I do, the more I don't care. I think it's really beautiful, the, uh, the algorithm of the wet on the Immerse Mark II also. So for now, I don't mind having it and I have more options with it. So for someone who has not, uh, who doesn't own a new neighbor pedal, I would recommend the Immerse Mark II over the new neighbor stereo wet, uh, just because it has more option. It's, it's just as beautiful. It's just another flavor. But the stereo wet, just as for the wet, the wet algorithm alone, I like it more. But since the Immerse is more complete. Uh, I would choose it if you don't have one. But if you if you said to change the wet, uh, I assume you have the wet. So I'm not sure if it's worth it, especially if you have a second reverb that has more stuff in it, like the Big Sky, like I have. Uh, I would stick to the, the stereo wet. But if you don't have a second reverb that can do many more things, I would get the Immer Smart 2. Sunir Design, hey Antoine, do you have any favorite delay time settings? No, I don't have any delay time settings, but it's because it's all about context. What is the tempo of your song? Um, if I have an always on delay, it's like, mm, 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 I don't know what BPM is, is this one, but this is pretty much what I have on my uh, El Capistan. Pretty much. Just as an always on. Uh, oh, I had even the timeline. So, yes, great. So, this is pretty much the delay time that I use. Uh, have to go. My wife is calling. So, uh, until next time, next stream, next month. 
Uh, John, which is Keone, enrolling in your courts class was a huge help to me, Antoine. Thank you so much. So for people who don't know, I have my YouTube channel with a lot of free content, um, guitar lessons, uh, original songs, tutorials, demos, but there is such a big thing that is behind the scenes, which is my email list and my online courses. So thank you very much. You like my online course. Um, I am working right now on a free extension to, go to the Chords program. I should be ready to post it at the beginning of 2020 next year. So stay tuned for that. So if you'd like to see all of that behind the scenes that I have it and you haven't, uh, the first link under the stream right now is my, and I know I say it a lot, but it's really to help you. It's my free mini course on ambient guitar chords structure. So I, I have two modules where I teach about the spread triads, which are the, the ambient chord shapes. Let's put on a reverb again. And then I have a module about harmonization. This is completely for free. And when you sign up for that, this is not the end. You also have, uh, you are so also subscribed to my email list and I'm going to send you way more free stuff with my email list. So I have a 15 minutes exclusive training that I don't offer anywhere else about how to voice your chords for ambient guitar. This is my best stuff that is really curated here. I uh, give you some charts of my favorite chords that you can download inside the emails and I'm giving you some uh, limited time offers for my online courses. So this is a lot. So if you want to see everything that is behind the scene, you just have to sign up for my free mini course with this link here or go on any of my ambient sketches and download my free guide, five tips to write better ambient songs. So. That's what John was saying. So I'm gonna play for two minutes and we are going to end the stream. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, thank you Brad, Gene, Matthias, Vince, Roy, uh, Jan, uh, Soft Pillow, Rock Hard Riffs, Mohamed Reza, I know you're, you're not here anymore, but thank you very much. Uh, if I forgot some people, uh, Mark, Melvin, Jason, James, thank you everyone for hanging out on this stream and we will talk to each other very soon. So I'm going to play a few minutes just to uh, say bye and uh, we'll see each other on a new stream next month. Let's spread the word. I'm doing streams every month and we are going to hang out with each other more times now. So have a great one, guys. <laughs> Watching the stream and until next time, au revoir my friends.